Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to uh, solve two examples uh, which will clear your concepts uh, regarding the dependent sources. So first example is a voltage dependent current source. So as we see here, this time and shape, we have a current source and uh, its value is depending upon Vx, which is a voltage developed across three ohm resistors. So we call this the current dependent, sorry, voltage dependent current source. So we are going to solve this example. This is from the lecture slides. Uh, it's a chapter three nodal and mesh analysis. It was part of the part of the lecture. So let's solve this. And what we are looking at is I we are going to find I1, I2, I3, find the currents. So let's open LT spies. Build new circuit. What how many we have one, two, three, four, and five resistors. All right, five resistors. We have one and two, three, four, and five resistors. All right, and we have one current source here. This is an independent current source supplying 15 ampere of current. So I'll go, we'll find current and we'll take control RR. It's a current source. Then we we'll go and we have one uh, voltage dependent current source. So I'll go to G, which is voltage dependent current source. And we'll provide it control E. And this is in series with this one. All right, let's start wiring our circuit now. F3, we will. So we'll start here. We have and we have the current source connecting here. So that's our circuit is one. One three two. So I'll start setting a value. We have one ohm, we have three ohm, and we have this one as two ohm. So one three two, and we have one and two ohm. So this one is two ohm, and this one here is one ohm. The current source is applying 15 ampere of current, so I'll put the 15 ampere of current here. Then we have so our uh, current dependent, voltage dependent current source uh, is getting its voltage sensing from the three ohm resistors. So these are the two sensor terminals. So we are going to connect them here. So we'll connect this one over here and this one over here. And the amplification factor is one by nine. So uh, this is what I'm going to do. So when, when we have to evaluate an expression, then it should go into the curly brackets as this one, one by nine. Okay, one by nine. So our circuit is now set. We still need ground. Don't forget to ground your circuit. Put your ground over here, F3. Simulate your circuit. Stop time is two seconds. Start saving the data when it's zero second. Okay. All right. So what we have to find is actually I1. I1 is 15 amperes so already. We know that it's 15 ampere. So there's no need to do that. But still, let's go and find the, the current. The current is 15 ampere. I1 is 15 ampere. 
and then we have to find i2 i2 is the current that flows through the i2 ohm uh, the sorry 2 ohm resistor so current through 2 ohm resistor is 11 amperes as we see here is 11 amperes and i3 is 17 amperes and i3 for i3 uh, is the, is the is the current that flows through the resistor r4 so if you see uh, r4 is 1 ampere sorry 17 and close to 17 amperes 16.998 and if you want to know the exact value we can always calculate by the cursor clicking that will give us the cursor value and we can move it so the cursor value says that the vertical uh, the vertical value is 17 amperes so that's uh, all about our circuit one um, just just to tell you guys i mean if, if we start calculating uh, these two resistors they should also come up uh, come up to the value so we have a 15 amperes and if this resistor has 11 ampere flowing into it then this this should constitute the rest of the four ampere because this i15 ampere when it reaches this node it gets split into two and these two nodes should should add to the 15 ampere so we can verify this so we have uh we have four ampere going through this resistor and then obviously we'll have 11 ampere going through this uh, resistor so 11 plus 4 is 15 and that's what this 15 ampere current is which gets uh, divided into two different currents here so let's do the next circuit we're done with this one uh, let me open a new circuit and for this we can solve a different a different circuit where we have actually a current dependent current source this is a little bit tricky so I'm going to take another example. So we are, we are asked to find the, the power slide by the dependent source. So the dependent source is applying a power, which is 4.5 kilowatt, as you see the answer here. So we, are, we have to find this, this power. And now, it, as we see, this is a current source, and it is depending upon current I1, which flows through the resistor 2 ohm. So it's a current dependent current source. Let's quickly wire the circuit. We have one, two, three resistors. So R1, two, and three. And we have a current source. So let's get our current source. Put it somewhere here. And we have current dependent current source. So current dependent current source is f here and it's going over here so this is my current dependent current source we can start winding our circuit So this is a this is it we have uh, one two and three ohms so I'll go with one ohm two ohm and we have three ohm so we have one two and three ohm the current source is applying 15 ampere current all right done let me just move this a bit f7 sorry f8 okay and meanwhile let me also move this one i'll bring it a bit here and there's a reason i'm doing that now what happens with the current sources the current dependent current sources we cannot simply define uh, a current any amount of current on which this source will be dependent so we have to use a technique 
in that technique and actually that comes directly from the help so if you go if you go f1 help and if you say current dependent so it's a voltage dependent current source this is a current dependent current source if you double click you can actually see the the syntax say the circuit element applies a current between nodes and the current applied the current applied is equal to the value of the gain times the current through the voltage source specified so this is very important the current applied which means that the current supplied by this current dependent current source is what is equal to the value of the gain which we will set here the gain times the current through the voltage source so the current through the voltage source so what we'll have to do since in the real uh, in the real uh, circuit that we're solving we are actually uh, trying to solve sorry uh, we are where, where is our current so our i1 flows through the resistor 2 ohm and our current dependent current source is dependent on this i1 so if we if we can uh, arrange a voltage source which goes in series with this resistor then we can ensure that the same i1 flows through that voltage source and then we can refer that voltage source in our current dependent current source to complete the circuit and to complete the requirement of the lt spice and lt spice says that uh, it is the the value is gain times the current through the voltage source so the current through the voltage source so we don't have a voltage source here so we will introduce one so let's go to the lt spice here so let me bring a voltage source so i'll bring a voltage source here and i'll just give it a value of zero and i'll refer to the name so let me name it as v uh, auxiliary so i'm just saying it's an, you could name it anything v zero v auxiliary v temporary whatever v requirement uh, whatever so i just named it as v auxiliary source and now the current which is passing through this resistor two will be surely passing through that voltage source so we are we are quite sure of that now we come back to our current dependent current source we right click this thing and we refer v auxiliary so i'm saying that please refer to my voltage auxiliary source uh, as, a, as a current source and then multiply it with a multiplier of what three three so that's my definition of the auxiliary source so that's what i'm saying so I'm saying that please uh, refer to V auxiliary, the current passing through the V auxiliary source and multiply it with the factor three. Once done, uh, we just have to provide the ground done and our circuit is now complete. Run for two seconds, start at zero and actually let's just all right here now in principle we wanted to find the the power through the the current dependent current source so actually we can find the power just bring your mouse over your mouse on top of the source press the alt key and you see that it will be it will it will start showing you the thermometers type of icon just click it and actually you see minus 4.5 kilowatt it shows you the rating of 4.5 kilowatt, which is the required answer. So that's how it will work. That's how, please carefully watch the video. All we did is this. We have introduced an auxiliary voltage source in order to fulfill the requirement. We set the voltage of auxiliary source as zero volts, and then we referred it in the current source. We just took that the name of the, that source and supplied it to our current dependent current source. And then after space, we define the multiplier. 
that's how we will be able to work with the current dependent current sources i hope uh, this video will help uh, in solving even your homework problems because if you're getting so many homework problems you can always verify your answer and verify the working of your circuits try to solve many examples and the lab manual will also have the similar examples for you to solve during the next week all right have a good day bye